Today we're going to do the most ambitious tier list ever on this channel. The ultimate non-basic land tier list, because there are billions of them. Okay, we're going to start off with Toad's suggestion of Maze of Ith. It was truly revolutionary, and it still is today. It is weirdly a land. It's a land that does not add any mana. But it does have this amazing ability to tap to untap target attacking creature. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. This is excellent. I mean, you can activate this when you know something's coming right at you. And then that's the moment you activate your Maze of Ith. No sort of like tapping the creature down before somebody might attack you. No, if they're attacking you, you untap it. And they don't deal any damage to you whatsoever. If there's one singular large creature, you just deal with it. Oh, you don't like that you want the old art? Oh, if we look at the old art too. We gonna look at the ancient scripture here. I just made sure we looked at that oracle text. Now, uh, it also can sometimes help you... Uh, when you are attacking, so if you're attacking with a creature you do not like how your opponent has blocked, you can also target your own creature, untap it, and then it doesn't deal nor receive combat damage that turn. So almost like gives it pseudo vigilance if things go bad. This is an excellent card. It's a great card. But I'm going to use the old, or sorry, the new picture. I think more people are familiar with this picture. Just the... The, uh, the boomers. The boomers love the old pic. I also love the old picture. I'm going to give this A tier. It's not... I mean, there is one disadvantage. Let's not forget about its disadvantage. Uh, it's... It's a land that doesn't add mana. So it's going to cost you your land drop. But either way, like, it's still pretty good. Ne next up, let's look at Turkey's Eye of Ugin. One of the most broken lands ever produced by Wizards R&D. They didn't even know how broken it was until they broke it. Uh, legendary land. Colorless Eldrazi you cast costs two less to cast. So that Emrakul, yeah, that goes from 15 to 13. Doesn't seem like a big idea. And this ability is great. Pay seven, tap, switch your library for a colorless creature card. All right, we're not even talking Eldrazi anymore. It can be anything. It can be a construct. It can be like Karn the Creature. And put it into your hand, then shelf your library. So a fantastic tutor. But then when they made cheap enough Eldrazi, like Thought Not Seer, Eldrazi Mimic, Endless One, uh, it basically became broken in half uh, in a second. And is still a great card. Even still great in Commander. Easily an S tier level card. Super oppressive, super busted. I mean, it, do it does everything. Okay, it ramps out your stuff cheaper. Um... Also, if you can somehow make all your creatures in your deck Eldrazi, will make them cheaper. Also, it is a tutor. So it tutors, so it's good in early game, good late game. There's nothing wrong with that card. Henrik with Teleria West. This card has one good ability on it. Enters the battlefield tap. That sucks. Add a blue for entering the battlefield. That also sucks, but also has transmute. For a blue, blue, one generic, discard this card, search your library for a card with convert mana cost zero, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, transmute only as a sorcery. So you can go get, uh, I mean, anything with zero cost. You can go get a mana crypt, you can go get a pact of negation, you can go get a summoner's pact. There's a lot of cards. One, well, it's also converted mana cost zero. So it could also just be a tutor for a land. Go get an Urza Saga. Go get go get your maze of it. Go get anything on this list. It's all fair game around here. Talera West is one of the best tutors in the game. Uh, if you're playing any blue in your deck, it will most definitely find something useful. So for that reason, this is also... I don't know, is it S tier? You know, it has to go in like the right... I don't know, I think it's still S tier. I think it's great. I think this card is great. It's a multi-format all-star, as far as I'm concerned. It's just going to look a little weird next to some other busted cards in the S-tier group. Uh, next up with Jay Thompson, Cavern of Souls. This, uh, whoops, Cavern for, for Souls. Cavern of Souls. This card was a game changer for all the creature decks, goblins, elves, merfolk, spirits humans 
uh, to make them uncounterable. If you have if you're a deck of counter spells, well, they're already getting weaker, and then they drove it further into the ground. Counter spells, the value of counter spells are crashing in 2024. They were crashing ever since 2014, and they have not recovered. Because when this enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, tap to add a colorless mana, which also can be used to cast like Eldrazi, uh, even if they're off on off creature type, but also tap, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen color, and that spell cannot be countered. It basically helps you with multicolor uh, creature decks, but just making them uncounterable, period. Also an S-tier level card. Sees play in every single format imaginable. We're going to have a lot of stuff in the S-tier, that's for sure. Look at Soulfy with Wasteland. Everyone's coming out with the S-tier cards. Wasteland! I actually cannot stand this art. I'm not, a, you know, honestly, I'm not really a fan of this art either, but it's like, it's OG, so it's very nostalgic, so it's just something I have. I can't look at any other Wasteland art. Tap out of mana. Tap, sacrifice, destroy, target, non-basic land. You trying to play with anything on this tier list? Well, Wasteland is the answer to it. It is the fixed strip mine, and even fixed, it is broken. And sees play in every format that it is possible. Uh, always as a four of two. Definitely S tier. Way too strong. Like, nobody plays with just basic lands. Everyone plays with non-basic lands. So your wasteland is the answer to their non-basic lands. Non-basic lands like... Uh, Dark Depths. Now, Dark Depths, I'm going to rate a little differently. It's a legendary Snowland, enters the battlefield with 10 ice counters on it. You pay 3, remove an ice counter from Dark Depths. All that crap doesn't matter, because you're usually just comboing with this card. When it has no ice counters on it, sack it. If you do create a Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. So, you can either play like Vampire Hexcatcher Hex to remove all the counters from this thing. You could also copy it with Thespian Stage to remove all the counters from this thing. So, there are multiple ways to combo with Dark Depths. That being said, I don't think this is one of the most dangerous cards. Like, you have to build heavily around this thing. It's not like any deck can just splash a Dark Depths. So, for that reason, this is a very strong, powerful card, but I don't think it's S tier. I think it's A tier. You have to build a little bit around it. Um, very, very strong, obviously, if it goes off. Although, it's a 2020 creature. You can bounce the damn thing today. Today, you could solitude it. It's like, even if you get the payoff, you may not even always win. Okay, Arethusa. Let's talk about the OG dual lands, like Tropical, Tropical Island. Oh, uh, no, now this is where I'm definitely going to look up the OG printing. Here, let's look at a re revised dual land. Is that revised? Maybe it's unlimited. It's unlimited. Do we have a revised? Revised. There we go. A little washed out color for all, all of us over here. Uh, the, the best dual lands. You take no damage. Fetch them out with fetch lands. They are fantastic. Uh, they add. They add two color mana. Basically, Legacy and Commander, they get to play with the best of the best lands that are, that even exist. So, Tropical Island, yeah, definitely. The whole series, Tropical Island, Volcanic Island, Underground Sea, they are the best lands, the best dual lands in Magic the Gathering. They are easily S-tier. And very delicious to get wastelanded. Oh, we have Super Chats coming through the, the cracks here. All right, let's take a... John with Mishra's Workshop. We're just gonna like fill up the S tier, or is this gonna be an entire S tier worthy show? Okay, Mishra's Workshop. Tap, tap that three colorless man your mana pool. This ma this mana may only be used to cast artifacts. I, like I think this card is insane. I don't even un I don't understand why this is restricted. What? Sorry, I don't understand why this is completely legal in like vintage. It's not restricted. It's also legal in Commander. This is Black Lotus. This is a repeatable Black Lotus for the colorless decks every single turn. This actually goes above and beyond all the other cards on this list. I should really re like. I probably should name this like S plus and then S because this thing I think is just beyond stupid in existence. I don't know, I guess they weren't really thinking about the power level of this card back then because maybe there just weren't that many artifacts. These days there's millions of artifacts! You can basically cast them for like one mana. 
Unbelievable card. Above and beyond insane. Okay, next up. Any love for Lotus Field? Plenty of love for Lotus Field. There's whole decks built around it. Lotus Field, Hexproof, enters the battlefield tapped. When uh, Lotus Field enters the battlefield, sack two lands, tap at three mana of any one color. I think I, this card is super fair. Like, unlike, you know, uh, Mishra's Workshop, which can go online turn one, you at least usually have to wait at least two turns before you get your Lotus Field online. You go play land drop, pay, play land drop, and then play your Lotus Field. Because otherwise, if you play Lotus Field, you play it earlier, you got to sack your Lotus Field in addition. So they actually balance this card quite well. Are there ways to break it? Absolutely. You can untap it. You can play Amulet. There's a lot of ways to um, really break this card, but you have to wait at least turn three in order to do it. So I actually think this is a very strong card, but not an overpowering card, and you do have to build around this card. Not like any random schmo can play your Lotus Field. Sometimes you have to play, ah, uh, what was that? There's like a red card that, you know, uh... Enter the battlefield effects, like, don't matter anymore. So, like, when this thing enters the battlefield, you don't have to sack lands. Uh, I think this is a very strong card. And not particularly broken. Not easy to splash. So, uh, A tier. Very, very strong card. You know, there's also combo decks. Whole combo decks in Pioneer built around this damn thing. Strict Proctor also does it. Oh, great. That's very good stuff. Right, very, very good. Okay, next up, let's look at Dem's Guy's Cradle. So I was supposed to go back to the Super Chats. Guys, Cradle. The uh, Talarian Academy for creatures. Legendary land. Add green to your map pool for each creature you control. If you play green, I don't know why you wouldn't play this card. Unless you don't play a lot of creatures. You like mana? Well, you're going to love mana. Like, this adds a lot of mana. And the more creatures you play, the more mana you get. The only downside is... So there's two downsides. If you don't have a lot of creatures in your deck, this card's useless. Also... If you have no creatures in play, this card is also useless. A at best, were you nuts? Do you have any idea how many decks play Guy's Cradle and Legacy? There are many. Many decks. Uh, I don't know what it's... I honestly don't know where it stands in, like, competitive commander. Um, maybe it's rubbish, because, like, that's a pretty combo-centric, heavy format. And maybe it doesn't appreciate, like, a lot of creatures. So I honestly can't speak for where this stands in competitive commander. But I think it's just casual commander. This card is very, very popular. Because it does what it wants to do. Okay, we got, uh, Bactard with, uh, Mystic Sanctuary. One of the best blue islands. This is arguably the best island. Between Basic Island and Mystic Sanctuary, some people might choose Mystic Sanctuary. So you can fetch it out, which is the main purpose of this card. If you couldn't fetch it out, it wouldn't be nearly as good. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands. When enters the battlefield untapped, you may put a target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. So it's almost like the reverse... Hmm, it's not quite... It's like slow Snapcaster Mage. But you can always get something, a huge bomb from your graveyard back on top of your library. Um, and the deal is, you only need one in your deck! That's all you need, you just need one Mystic Sanctuary in your deck, and it will bring back your best card from your graveyard back on top of your library. Very, very, very good card. Unfortunately, uh, in many multiple... Is this banned in Popper and Modern? Is it ban worthy or is it a very strong card? You know what? I think I'm still going to give it A tier. I could be underrating this card. Frankly, I never thought it was that insane. You still have to put it on top of your library. It's not like you can make any good use of it immediately. But it's, it's still a strong card. Very, very strong. I'm not taking that away from Mystic Sanctuary. Now we got Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Nykthos, Shrine. Another build around card. So we have Nykthos, Legendary. You can tap to add a colorless man your mana pool. So you've got nothing in play. You still get something. Pay two, tap, choose a color, add mana of. Add to your mana pool an amount of mana equal to your devotion to that color. Uh, this card broke standard. Also broke Pioneer. Maybe arguably still breaking Pioneer. Uh, mono Green very, very, was a very, very, very strong dominant deck in the format for forever. Uh, they're keeping it around though. So it's still legal. I think in Commander, a lot softer. You need to be heavy on one color to make it like really, really work. And on top of that, 
just like maybe the slow budget version of Guy's Cradle. I don't even know what to grab from Nykthos here. But it's a very good card. It's competitive. It's strong. You do have to build your entire deck around it. Not a very easy card to splash. So you basically have to warp your whole deck to uh, abuse Nykthos drawing to Nyx. And also, if you have nothing in play, then it it still adds mana, fortunately, but it's it's a bit weak. Next super chat we got uh, from Darkstar Shura, Urza Saga. What's wild to me is this card does not look like it's going to get banned anytime soon. There are a lot of predictions. Let me let's read the card. It's a it's a it's a saga on a land. It is also an enchantment. So chapter one, you add mana. Uh, chapter 2, you have the ability to pay 2 tap to make a 0, zero construct that gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact you control. And then chapter 3, you sack it and search your library for an artifact card with mana cost 0 or 1. Like these days, I mean, in competitive magic, everyone's getting Shadow Spear. In uh, Commander, you can go get your, you can go get Sensei's Divining Top, you can go get Soul Ring. Like at the very worst, this is going to be a Soul Ring Searcher. This is, I, I imagine this is like a universal card that almost everyone needs to play, and it's colorless. Now, there is some downside to this card. First off, it's an enchantment, so it can be blown up by enchantment removal. It's also a land, so it also gets hit by the non-basic land removal. It can be really clunky if you go for that construct plan. It takes a lot of mana. you got to spend two mana and also tap this thing. So if you go all in on that, you might be a little slow. It's not like you're going to, it wins the game by itself. It can under some circumstances, but not always. Uh... Yeah, a lot of people thought that this... I also thought this card would get banned in a few years. Because, like, some 0-1 mana card would just break the crap out of it. But that hasn't come up yet. And it's turned out to be a little clunkier than we could have imagined. Like, games of Magic are just ending faster than this card makes constructs, tutors, and then does its own thing. I hardly see it, probably because it's so expensive. Yeah, it's pretty. It, it's a little pricey. It's around the 40 buck mark, and uh, dies to weird saga rolls. Yeah, it dies to blood moon. Dies to earth, uh, spreading seas. So maybe this is not the S tier. I I would love to put this in the S tier category, but I think I'm just gonna put an A tier. It's just a solid value engine and tutor. Um, I'm still hopeful that Urza Saga is gonna get broken in half when the right zero mana or one mana card gets printed, but it hasn't existed yet. Uh, anyway, okay, next up, let's go look at... Doesn't die to itself? No, it does not die to itself. Mutavault with Book of Exalted Deeds to lock the game. Well, we have to look at cards in its own right. Mutavault. One of the more flexible, uh... Changeling lands? Like, they didn't... I, there was, like, some specific rule why it doesn't have Changeling. I don't remember why. Some judge in the comment section can speak on it. Anyway, it taps for a colorless. You can pay one. Mutavolt becomes a 2-2 creature with all creature types. Does not get changeling until end of turn, and it's still land. Uh, it's just a useful land. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to say. It's it's like, okay, you, play it in, you can play it in Merfolk. You can play it in Spirits. If if the creature base deck could, could use some extra creatures in the form of lands, uh, you can use it here. However... With so many good non-basic lands, this card gets bumped a lot. You have to be like heavily in monocolor, so at most two color to make use of this card. Uh, because otherwise, the it is a colorless land and it just gets in your way. I'm actually going to put Mutavault in B tier. It's a good land, but not mandatory to a lot of the decks that would want this type of card. Worst Misha. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> the worst Misha's factory. Okay, I will go now to uh, Bacon Catbug, the Bazaar of Baghdad. Bazaar of Baghdad. So the Arabian Nights. Oh, gee. Okay, hold on. Let's look. Let's read the ain't. Let's not read the ancient text. It looks too complicated. Uh, ta it's a land. It does not add mana, so that sucks. But it does have this insane ability of drawing two cards and then discarding three cards. This card got broken in Dredge. Like, Dredge is like... Arguably the best deck in Vintage, assuming you're not preparing for anything. Uh, and it's interesting that it's completely legal in Commander. I don't know. I can't really speak to the power level of that format. But I know that because it is uh, unbelievable in Vintage and, and banned in Legacy, that this is a very easy uh, S-tier level card. But we'll, look, look, we'll take a picture of the, uh, the OG image. Take! T tap to take two cards from your library, after which you must immediately discard three from your hand. That's right. 
S tier Bazaar of Baghdad. We did Mishra's workshop. Look, it's over here. Yeah, gotta take. I gotta take thin pictures of everything. Very thin pictures. Islar's high market. All right, high market. Tap to add a mana. Also tap sack a creature. You gain one life. So practically, this card is sort of awkward. I mean, you could build a deck around sacrifice synergies and that can uh, help you and it doesn't cost any mana outside of tapping the land itself. And you gain a little you gain a little bit of life. Nothing wrong with that. It's not a bad card, but it's not the most proactive powerful card, so this is a very clear clear B tier to me. Also, not it's also like sort of a niche card. Not every deck wants high tide. Sorry, not high uh, high market. You got to like, you would have to be really starving on non-basics, really, to make this thing work. Uh, or, you are building your deck around sacrificing your creatures. Mutavolt can't have Changeling because of what layers it would get that ability on. It would gain it later in the layers, then the creature types are set, so it wouldn't work. That makes no sense to me, David. But if it makes sense to somebody else... You know, the, the way magic works to me is, like, uh, it either works because it works, and it just doesn't work because it doesn't work. Okay, next up, let's look at J Hogue with uh, Cloud Post. I miss it in Popper. Cloud Post. It's a Locust. Comes to play tapped. Tap add one ma to add one to your mana pool for each Locust in play. So in Commander, this is actually isn't it this card like just Stone Cold worthless? Because you can't even have that many Locusts in play. Like how many Cloud Posts can you have? So for that one format alone. This card goes way down in value, because this goes up in value if you can play multiples. All the cloud posts, all the the life gain post. I know it's not that's when that's not what it's called, but it's uh it's a very, very strong land. In yeah, you could have or I you're probably suggesting Vesuva. But uh cloud post in combination with Vesuva to have more locusts in play. Uh can make insane amounts of mana. Insane amounts of mana. That being said, you have to build the deck right for it. I will say it's an A tier level card. Very, very strong. But not without its faults. Wasteland will keep that card in check. In German, locust is a fancy word for toilet. Sort of looks like a toilet. Look, this is it's being flushed down the toilet. Even though it's in the sky. Nikachu, it counts your opponent's locusts too. Oh, wow, really? Well, the cloud post mirror must be insane. You gonna play your locusts? Are you going to play your Locusts? I'm not going to play my Locusts until you play your Locusts. That's it becomes a blinking match. Pacers, fan forever. Caracas. Uh, what are the most... I mean, this is like planes with upside. It's literal planes with upside. It's a legendary land tap out of white, so if you play white in your deck, there's like no reason not to play this card. Return target legendary creature to its owner's end. Okay, you can like bounce your uh, your opponent's creature if they play it which is insane tempo play you tap one land to like bounce their like seven mana card or you can protect your own legendary creatures by ba uh, bouncing in response to wrath effects and removal easy s tier yeah easy s tier i don't know where we're gonna I'll take a picture of this banding commander for a reason sort of defeats the point of the format with that thing ugly art it's a great art. Nothing wrong with that art. Sometimes they make art equally as good as the old old OG art. Evan with Manemo. School at Water's Edge. This card actually went up in value recently. Um, not talking about the price. I'm talking about it's like it's worth in the game. Okay, Manemo School at Wall's School at Water's Edge. It's a legendary land. Tap, add a blue to your mana pool, or pay a blue. Tap, untap target legendary permanent. Now they used to have utility with your commander, so you can easily attack and untap it. Now it has utility with the one ring. So the one ring, you tap it to draw a card, and now you can untap it to draw more cards on the exact same turn. And when that thing already has like two counters, you tap at draw three, untap with the Manamo, draw another four. It's insane. It's just completely insane. Very similar to uh, Caracas. It is, I mean, it's just like a free splash if you're playing blue, so why not? Now that being said, it doesn't have as broken of synergy as Caracas, so it is a very good land. But it's not 
completely broken or anything like that. You got to build around it a little bit. So I'm going to put it in the A tier. That's a very nice land. Uh, next super chat we've got from King Ginger. Yava Maya, Cradle of Growth. Oh, I want to see the. There we go. Cradle of Growth. The Green Urborg. Uh, each land is a force in addition to its other types. That's it. So it lets you. I mean, most importantly, it lets you play things like. For example, Maze of Ith, and which doesn't add mana normally, so we will we now have the ability to uh, turn non-basic lands that don't add mana to add mana now. That is uh, effectively one of its best things. Uh, you can also there's other cute things you can do with this. Like for example, you can play a fetch land and not take any damage from that fetch land. You can just tap it for a green because even the fetch land now uh, is a forest that can be tapped for mana. Save yourself a little bit of life there. Really don't know what is the benefit of this card in Commander if it has any. Also, it has like you know some niche purpose to uh, give yourself forest walk because it gives your opponents forests as well. Okay, so uh, this card is very good playable. So we're putting an A tier. Very, very nice playable. Okay, well, uh, is this in the the chat? No, I don't see this one. Okay, we'll take Starfire Dragons Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. Uh, one of the most insane cards that they ever printed in, in Magic the Gathering. Okay, ignore what the card actually says. It's wrong. It's all creatures have at the beginning of your upkeep. Destroy this creature unless you pay one. What the hell is going on here? I, you know, I would love for someone to go back in time. Not go back in time, but go find out who in R&D made this thing. And, like, just interview them. Like, so what was the idea behind this? Like, what was the point of this card? Why did you bring conjure this thing into existence? All it does is hate on the on the cards that actually make the game fun, and also it taxes you as well. Good, but here's the good news: it doesn't tap to add mana, but it doesn't change the fact that this card is uh, an insane S tier card. This card also needs to be a bit built around, but its effect is just uh, outrageously powerful. Uh, that it's still worthy of being in the S tier. Old boy's like, I like Tabernacle. Yeah, I know. Some people like it. You people are crazy. Okay, Sleazy has a massive super chat. Sleazy, thank you very much for your super chat. Castle Dracula. You can't name five cards at once. I guess in this case you can. What's Castle Dracula? Ramnap Rooms, Tolarian Academy. One card at a time! Okay, I'm gonna go back and forth between all of these. So let's go look at Castle Dracula. I thought you were gonna name like a series or something. Okay, so we'll do Castle Dracula first. Uh, for tap, add a colorless. Uh, pay one, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a vampire spell. And also, okay, so it's like a City of Brass for vampires. Pay five, tap. Create a blood token. This ability costs one less to activate for each vampire you control. This is a very, very sad card. It is, it is like specifically for the vamp. Like how many colors do you need your vampire deck? Are we in five color vampire territory here? I don't think we are, to be honest. So the card is good. Uh, I don't like this last ability. Like, these first two abilities are not very impressive. There's a lot of cards that will let you play your vampires for any color for nothing. For no mana. So to spend five mana to make a blood token. I mean, it's better than nothing. But I'm still going to put it in high tide territory. All right, heard the music. This is going to be a long show. I've, I can feel it. Hear the music. That means we have to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. The first place I go to buy all my Magic the Gathering cards. Just finished. Polished off my playset of Stern Scoldings, which I'm going to need for all my future modern events. Deal of the week this week. Save 15% off all Secret Lair singles and sealed product. I don't know. An offer you can't refuse is a Secret Lair card. I thought that was like a RCQ promo. But in either case, you benefit because uh, they are sell selling it for 15% off. I think it's cute. I, I got actually an offer you can't refuse in non-foil for my commander deck. Apparently, that is a CEDH staple. You need to have an offer you can't refuse. 
Who do you like? Two treasure tokens or a combo off? No, you want two treasure tokens. And 15% off isn't the best you can do when you use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for five an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. Play your deck any format you want because it's cheaper if you play many decks all at once. Also, it's a bandless saver. You Are you afraid of playing the best deck in the format, but it's going to get banned? Well, you don't have to worry about it, because when you're renting cards with Mana Traders, your cards don't get banned. Mana Traders cards get banned. You can rent using my Mana Traders link in the description below, or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E. And now back to our wonderful uh, non-basic lands. People are passionate about non-basic lands. Okay, Alan with Boseju. Where am I going? Yeah, Boseju is like, uh, it's like the Caracas of green, really. It's the Caracas of the time, uh, because it's a le it's a legendary land, but it adds a green. Like, you're just completely free rolling on this card. There's like no disadvantage not to play a Boseju. These days, like artifacts and enchantments, good luck keeping them on the board for like more than two turns. Uh, because it's got channel, pay a green, one generic, discard Boseju, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land in opponent controls. That player may search their library for a land card with basic land type, put onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Uh, this ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. Oh, wow! You can go from a whole two to one! Uh, but it is so versatile. I don't know, name me a green deck that doesn't want to play this card. Like, it's almost an auto-include these days. It's an answer to almost, almost everything on the list, uh, too. So it's easily S-tier. Another S-tier worthy card. Uh, in Command Tower? I don't, so I don't know how good this card is. So land, tap, add one man of any color in your commander's, co commander's color identity. So isn't this also just like a super auto include? But it's basically just a non-basic land. I mean, it's just another non-basic land. It's like just a perfect city of brass. I really can't speak to how good this card is. Like if you need, like, I mean, if you're a five color deck, like why wouldn't you play this card? But it does, it's not like, it's not particularly interactive. It's just like, just a good card. It is a staple. It is a Wooberg staple. Yeah, unplayable in all the formats outside of Commander. So for that, we're going to take it down a notch. It's going to go to A tier. It's an auto-include. I don't really find it particular. It's like, it's just good mana fixing. It doesn't interact. It's not like Cavernous Souls where it like renders your opponent's counter spells useless or anything like that. Steve Cooper is like, Sorrow's Path needs to fill the... Yeah, we have... <laughs> I should have just made it like, triple S, double S, S, A, B, then D. Because that's probably how this whole show is going to go. Uh, land, choose two target blocking creatures and opponent controls. If each of those creatures could block all creatures that the other is blocking, remove both of them from combat. Each one then blocks all creatures the other is blocking. Whenever Sora's Path becomes tapped, it deals two damage to you and each creature you control. Useless! I mean, it's worse than useless. It's bad, worse than bad. Hell, I could have just made it like... I could have been given it a bigger picture here. Probably. Okay, next super chat. Eric with the strip mine. Eric loves their strip mine. Strictly better wasteland. That's all I have to say about this. Tap out of mana. Also sack to blow up uh, anybody's land on the battlefield. So ba non-basic lands, but also the basic lands. Uh, maybe we should just take an old one. I don't know what's more iconic looking. Look at that big hole. The big hole! This is restricted in uh, vintage. Only one copy. Only one allowed around here. Ghost Quarter. Basically, budget wasteland. Tap data mana. Tap sacrifice Ghost Quarter. Destroy target non basic land, but they can search their library for a basic land, so they're gonna at least replace it with something. Something's not nothing! So you don't actually put them down on lands, but it's still useful utility. B tier. Actually gets played in a lot of formats. We did Boseju. It's over there. It's a good land. A very, very, very good land, actually. Very, very, very good land. Okay, uh, we got the Bolduvian Trading Post. That is a highly specific card.
Okay, what the hell does this card do? If Bolduvian Trading Post would come to play, sacrifice an untapped mountain you control instead. Uh, if you do, Boldu put, put Bolduvian Trading Post into play. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard. So basically, we have to sack a land to put it into play. We tapped at two mana to our mana pool. Hmm. You also pay one tap, deals one damage to target attacking creature. Actually, that's a little too high. That's probably a little too strong. But it does that. So I guess it can kill Ragavans? This seems pretty underwhelming to me, and it's like a little bit more vulnerable to things like Ghost Quarter Wasteland and Strip Mine. So for that reason, I can see... I don't... What is the purpose of this? It's like if you at least bounced a land back to your hand, I could see that. But I don't really get the gimmick here. If there is a way to break this card, I'm going to put it into C tier. I think it's, it's like... I think what you... The vulnerabilities of this type of card do not make up for uh, dealing a damage to an attacking creature. And on top of that, it's like you're tap. It's like you're paying three mana for that, right? Because this this gland is worth two mana. You have to pay and you have to tap it for its ability. Then you have to tap like another land uh, in order for to pay for it. So you're basically spending three mana to ping somebody for a single damage when they attack, if they attack. How about Commander's Favorite, the Reliquary Tower? Is this, like, any good? You have no maximum hand size out of colorless mana. Do you really need to have 30 cards in your hand? There's, like, a lot of cards these days. They just say, like, you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. It doesn't hurt you. I think this is, like, a really popular card, but I don't think this is, like, mandatory whatsoever. At least I don't think so. I could be completely out of my mind. Commander players, you let me know where Reliquary Tower really belongs. But I think it's like just a mid card. It's not bad. I mean, in the right decks, you might want to have this ability to have uh, no maximum hand size. But I'd rather my land was doing something else. Do I really need to have 40 cards in my hand at once? If you have... Yeah, 30... <laughs> Jess is like, yes. Yes. 30 cards is good. You have 30 cards in your hand. Why haven't you won the game yet? What's happened here? Okay, next up, we've got King Ginger's uh, Dowsing Dagger. Transformed to Lotus Veil Insane. Dowsing Dagger? This doesn't count. It needs to be like, it's, it's an equipment first, land second. So this is an equipment. This is gonna be for some other show. So we're gonna donate that. We're gonna donate it to uh, point and click elephant graveyard. That card rings a bell, but I don't know why. Oh yeah, because it's like really expensive for what little it does. That's insane! It, it taps out of colorless mana. You can also regenerate your your elephant, and it's three hundred dollars. What that? What is going on here? Is there like an elephant deck that I am completely unaware of? Is that like uh, Thrag Tusks? No, it makes Thrag Tusks leaves a beast. Call the herd, I guess. Make some elephants. I don't understand this game anymore. Anyway, I think it's. I think this card is just plain bad. I guess it's just iconic from Arabian Nights, hence why it's so expensive. Uh, D tier. Regenerate your elephants somewhere else. It's reserved. You know, some reserve list cards are worthless. Somehow someone decided, you know what, this is a great card. I can regenerate my elephants with this thing. Okay, next up, uh, Eric. Oh, no, we did Eric's. Let's take another one from Sleazy, I guess. Sleazy has a billion of these. We'll take Talarian Academy. Talarian Academy! There are whole YouTube channels that... this. The name Tal Talarian Academy uh, has created some YouTube channels echoing this name because it is so powerful. Tap to add a blue to your mana pool for each artifact you control. The easiest, this is like one of the easiest lands to get a payoff for. Because like no one's going to do anything about your mana artifacts. Or any of your artifacts for that re reason. You play Mishra's Bauble, it costs nothing. And all of a sudden, Academy is turned on. So it like can be tapped for five, six, seven mana, depending on how, how much stuff you spew, spew on the battlefield. Easy S tier. Uh, also, take a look at this. Banned! Banned! 
Restricted! Banned! This is like, no one's allowed to play this card. I wonder if we're ever going to see this card uh, in uh, Arena. Would they dare reprint the Academy? Uh, would they dare do it? Yeah, this tier list is a bit silly. We have, like, Bo Seiju in the same tier as, like, Talarian Academy. Probably does not belong. Yeah, just reserve list things. Uh, okay. Let's take... Oh, let's take Apocalypse's Ancient Tomb. The Tomb of the Ancient. All right, tap to add uh, two colorless mana, but you have to take two damage. So that damage adds up. But it's... In, it's I mean, basically, it's Soul Ring on a land. Like, why wouldn't you play this card? It's heavily played in Legacy, also heavily played in Commander. Let me see the original uh, Ancient Tomb. I don't like any of the arts for Ancient Tomb. Like, I gotta buy an Ancient Tomb, and I'm like, I'm not a fan of any of this. I actually don't mind the old art on, like, a somewhat new border, but I they're all foil. This one's digital, this one's foil. I can't get it anywhere else. Just, none of these really speak to me. I guess I sort of like the... This one, maybe the Lord of the Rings one is my favorite. I'm still not in love with any of them. S-tier land. Super S-tier. Very, very good land. Old boy with the Cephalid Coliseum. Uh, there we go. Cephalid Coliseum. Tapped out of blue to your mana pool, and it'll deal one damage to you. Threshold, pay a blue, tap, sacrifice it. Target player draws three cards, then discards three cards. Activate this ability only if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. Uh, it is... It is like this weird playable in some versions of Dredge. I don't... I really can't speak to actually how this card plays out in Commander. Uh, because it is basically free like it deals damage to you but like is that is it that big of a deal uh somewhere down the game you might want to convert your lands into a way of searching for some gas because it's effectively like a super looting but you can like discard a bunch of garbage lands that you don't want anymore and get something else is this oh, is this the same art no this is a very different art actually okay let's look at the og set there's a, actually a cephalid here this it's the cephalid coliseum this cephalid has no audience Basically singing to nobody. Or is this a different... Or, or, am I, it's this, or is this Colosseum is different than the Colosseum that I'm thinking of? Maybe I'm looking stupid at the moment. B tier. Not great. It's not terrible. It'll do what you want it to do. Next super chat we got from Pacers Fan Forever. Thank you very much. Um, Sarah Sanctum. Ah, uh, yes. The the enchantment to layer an academy. So you tap to add a white to your mana pool for each enchantment you control. Very strong card. Downside is you have to play with a lot of enchantments. That's harder to build around. Um, it's just way harder to build around. That's the only downside to Sarah Sanctum. But no doubt about it. Like, once you start getting your enchantment thing going, you're going to have a lot of mana. It's too bad it's not really in green because I think there's a lot of green enchantments. You know, basically like... Uh, all the enchantment creatures, enchantress, and so on, they're all in green, but, you know, having a ton of mana doesn't hurt you either. So I'm going to give this A tier. The enchantment players, they might get angry at me, but I think it's just a harder deck to build around than, say, you know, Talarian Academy, which uh, almost any deck will play. Urza Saga works with... Oh, true story. Urza Saga is an enchantment. You can go turn one Urza Saga, turn two Sarah Sanctum, and then... You add one mana in your mana pool. <laughs> but you can do that. Freginka didn't get one yet today. I think there's a lot of people that aren't going to get one today. There's just a, an overflowing number of cards. Diamond Valley. Sa tap, sack a creature. You gain life equal to the sack creature's toughness. This is an infinitely better high, high market. But it doesn't add mana. I think this is just like... I think this is just a weak card. Like, it's, I think these sack creature cards are just jank. I could be wrong. I don't know why you want to use these cards. If there's, like, a combo deck built around this thing, well, I'm just going to look stupid. B tier. Okay, we got uh, Crocor Games, the vault of Cat Lacan. Vault of Cat Lacan is 
Not even a land. No, it doesn't count. Donated. It's a legendary enchantment. So we're going to donate this to... Uh, do I have a library up here? I don't see anyone mention library. So we'll get prom and, uh, Prod Mile with Library of Alexandria. I so wish that this card was, like, legal in Commander. Like, yeah, probably the price will go from, like, 2,000 to a billion. Don't you people proxy at this point anyway? Uh, I mean, you know, the price is so high, we might as well say we, get, we can all proxy the thing. It's card draw for all. Everyone gets card draw. So it's a land. Tap. Add one man to your mana pool. Or you can tap, draw a card. Activate this ability only if you have exactly seven cards in your hand. To some, to a large degree, like I'm not gonna say this card's bad. This card's great. It's amazing. It's S tier, but I think it's a little overrated, for even for an S tier card. I don't think it's an auto included. Every well, maybe it's gonna be an auto included in Commander because you get to draw a card even if you go first. Um, but still, actually, I can't stand this. We got it. we need the OG picture. The OG. There we go. S tier. Unban it. Rules committee, just do it. Just do it. Uh, read vault really fast. It basically flips right away. But it does. It's not a land. It's not a land. <laughs> it's like it's a land, sort of. It's a land on the backside. If you can play it immediately as a land, I will count it. But you, but you can't. It's li it's literally an enchantment. Or hold on, wait, uh, was there some other clause? No, it's a legendary enchantment. It's being your, I don't care. It doesn't count. Toilet Duck, River Delta for garbage tier. I, I, I like these cards. I think there's some people who don't even know these cards. Oh no, this is a different land. I thought you. Uh, I thought I was talking about the slow fetch lands. So if the, uh, it's a depletion land. Uh, it doesn't un. So it, if there are any depletion counters on River Delta, it doesn't untap during your untap phase. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a depletion counter from River Delta. Tap to add a blue to your mana pool, put a depletion counter on River Delta. Oh, that's terrible. This is just stone cold trash. This is in Soros Path. I mean, it's Soros, pa pa uh, Soros Path worthy. Very Soros Path worthy. Do you not draw if you go first in other formats? Nope. Only Commander. In the competitive formats, at, at this point, I think we should draw an extra card for going first. But there's actually just too many formats, like even limited, where um, going first is such a huge advantage that giving them an extra card on top of that is just too much. Yeah, they make they make uh, an exception for commander. Seagate restoration. We got... Uh, okay, now I'll count this because the backside at the very... Like, you can choose either or. So there's there's no requirement to play the black the backside to this because you can just play it. It's just like, it doesn't... under no, Like, under all circumstances, you may play your Seagate Reborn, which uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. So you actually just bolt yourself in order to play- To tap that blue mana! That's pathetic. But why would we want to do that? Because, Secret Restoration, for seven mana! It's a source redraw draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand, plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. I think this card is such jank. <laughs> I think it's it's so janky. So the only advan- One advantage uh, players in modern use this card i mean it's technically not a land it's technically the front the front side is uh it's a mana source that a lot of combo decks can play that are technically mana less because the rules of the game will count the front side first before the back side so we'll consider this more of a sorcery than a uh than a land so a lot of combo decks can use this or abuse this as a mana source in their mana -less Technically, Manalus deck, like a Charbelcher deck, for example. Uh, where to put it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to put it in B tier. I, think, I still think it's a very janky land in the right deck. It can be good, but like normally it's very hard to use. Just with Rogue's Passage. 
This is like a card that is stone cold useless outside of Commander. And then even in Commander, it's like tier one if the game is like really slow. Like really slow. Like, I don't know, power level one to three to four. But if the, the power level is too high and there's too many combo decks, this card is like a little bit awkward, isn't it? So for that reason, I understand it's like very playable in A format. I'm going to give it B tier. Uh, but trying to, you know, get your creature unblockable against your opponent's Thoracle deck. Well, let's, let's see how that works out for you. Not well. Uh, we got Pacers Fan Forever with Oboro, Palace in the Clouds. This is like a land that a lot of people play, but it's like really niche utility. The greatest... This card's like greatest function is essentially to holy crap be nine hundred dollars what is this foil oh it's one of those uh um uh serialized cards that's why okay but anyway uh it's the main function of this card for a lot of decks is just landfall so you get extra landfall mill plays this card because with the crabs with the land airing the battlefield and you mill your opponent for like three lands they can oh borrow every single turn uh, and it can also filter for, like, brown mana, but it's basically like a landfall machine. Not a very strong card overall, so it's B tier. It's like, it's got, like, that niche utility, but, you know, it's like, you know, high market. Like, it has niche utility, you can play it, it's not mandatory. Very, very weak interaction. Brown mana, yeah, so like high, t like Mutavault, for example. So, like, a cute trick you can do with this is, uh, you tap it for a blue. And then you can pay one from your Muta Vault or High Market to bring the Oboro back to your hand. Then replay it and tap for another blue if you need more blue mana. So brown mana. Le Pera P Peralta. Or Je Peralta. Have we done Kessig Wolf Run? Uh, nope. Kessig Wolf Run. Where is it here? Where is your super chat sound effect? Tapped out of Colas. Also pay it red and a green uh, and X. Tap target creature gets plus X plus zero and gains trample until end of turn. Uh, almost never that you're playing uh, this card in super multiples. Very strong card though. I mean, in the right deck, it is uh, a good way to turn any random creature into an absolute monster. Has seen competitive play, still sees competitive play uh, in all formats. Really hard to say that this is a bad card, but you do have to build around the, the, the card a little bit. It needs to be in the right deck. I'll give it A tier, though. Still competitive. Do have to be in red and green. Not a very easy card to splash. It's a little narrow, but I think it's stronger than most of the B tier cards, so uh, I'm definitely going to let that one slide. Uh, okay, who hasn't got a card? I don't think uh, Crab Tribe has one. Mount Doom. The fires of Mount Doom. Frodo was there. Not when it erupted, though. Okay, Legendary Land. Tap, pay one life to add a black or red. So it's like basically a pain land. Three mana. Tap, deals one damage to each opponent. That is not very impressive. Also seven mana. Tap, Sack Mount Doom and Legendary Artifact. Choose up to two creatures, then destroy the rest. Activate only as a sorcery. That is good. That being said, a little too casual for my taste. You can't really force a whole lot of action out of this. It's a lot. You need eight mana to pull it off. So it's like a very strong casual card. Uh, second ability looks stone cold useless to me. So we'll put that in the B tier. <laughs> Frodo was there when it erupted. No, he left. If he was there when it erupted, he'd be dead. <laughs> you think any. Uh, well, I guess it. Okay, so he left, then he got saved by what? The. The Falcons? So, no, they're not Falcons. They're the, the Eagles. The Great Eagles. The host is like, first time catching your stream. Not sure if this was said yet, but Bajookabog. Okay, let's look at Bajookabog. Bajookabog. Actually, one of the most versatile graveyard hate cards in the game. Comes the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, you just exile uh, target player's graveyard. And you tap it for a black. Now, the downside is it does enter the battlefield tapped, but, I mean, if you are a player playing black, I mean, this is relatively free. Like, what do you want to do? Play, like, go in and play, like, Artifact Hate in your sideboard? No, you can just play your Bajooka Bog, and it's, like, a pretty free card to play. So, I like the Bajooka Bog a lot. So, this is uh, pretty easy to include in a lot of black decks. A tier. 
A tier worthy card. Okay, let's get another one from Sleazy. So we got many of them here. Uh, oh, we did Library of Alexandra. In that case, we are going... To, <laughs> I was looking for Library of Alexandra. So we're going to donate that one to... Suddenly Boop, Treetop Village. If you asked, like, I don't know, six years ago, seven, this would have been higher on the list. These days, now, land, lands that come into Battlefield tapped, it better have some amazing bonkers ability. Like, you know, s shutting down some combo deck that utilizes their graveyard, pretty worth it. But Treetop Village, to just add a green and then turn into a 3-3 three, three ape, not quite the power, like, like, it's not quite the power level of today, these days. Where's the apes? Where's Monk? There's a Monk. Harambe. It's like an okay card, though. So we can put in the B tier. It's still like, you know, it's a creature on a land, but, um, green decks? I think a lot of green decks these days, they don't even want to, like, put their lands into play all that much. It's a huge downside. Huge. Uh, William with Blast Zone. I love this card. I don't like playing against it, but... So Blast Zone uh, enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it, uh, tapped out of colorless, or you can pay double X tap to put X charge counters on Blast Zone. Also pay three tap, sacrifice Blast Zone, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Blast Zone. So if you're a huge fan of Ratchet Bomb, Powder Keg, this is that on a land, effectively. And it already is ready to go to kill one drops uh, the moment that it enters the battlefield. And I think it's pretty damn good. I think this is a really great card. Uh, still sees a lot of play. Probably, it's a little awkward. You do have to build around this card a little bit. Do you know what? I'm still going to put an A tier. This is a little too strong for B tier, but I don't think it's strong enough. I don't think it's too weak for A tier. Okay, Sleazy, how about another one? You got another one in here. You got Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Five of the eye. Now, speaking of treetop village and uh, creature lands, we... Whoops! Sleazy! I <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Land, uh, if you control two or more other lands, Hive of the Eye Tyrant enters the battlefield tapped. So the point is, treetop village always enter the battlefield tapped. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, if you have too many lands, then it will enter the battlefield tapped. It enters the battlefield untapped on the earlier turns. So you tap to add a black for turn one and turn two. And it becomes still a 3-3 creature with uh, menace. And whenever this creature attacks, exile target card from defending player's graveyard. It's still land. This card is fantastic. It's a really good one. I accidentally removed Sleazy Super Chat from my queue. Okay, I'm going to put this in the A tier. It actually sees a lot of play in both uh, Modern and um, Pioneer. Very strong card. And if you're in... I don't know if it sees any play in Commander. I mean, it's cheap enough to play. It's absolutely cheap enough. Let's see, can I find Sleazy's last card? Sleazy! Sleazy, if you're still around, tell me what your last card was. I'm going to keep uh, keep an eye out for it. Otherwise, I accidentally buried it. Okay, uh, from Blacklands Geo, Feel of the Dead. Enters the battlefield tapped, add a colorless. Also, when, when, uh, whenever Field of the Dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Now, the biggest problem with this is, like, you could cheat with, like, the different names. You can have, like, Island. Snow-covered Island. Right? Plains. Snow-covered Plains. So, getting, like, seven different uh, lands with different names, no problem. Feel of the Dead is just completely broken with, like, Primeval Titan or basically any cards that ramp out cards that can search out any land from the library and put onto the battlefield. Uh, as you can see, it has quite the resume. Banned in Pioneer. Banned in Modern. Banned in Explorer. Banned in Historic. Banned in Brawl. Uh, it is just an army by itself. And then, so whenever another land enters the battlefield under your control, so like once you get that initial army of zombies and you every single turn, you have to deal with another stupid zombie. And these decks, they have more ramp. So like they make a bunch of zombies next turn, bring out a bunch more lands, make more zombies. It's actually quite frustrating to deal with. It's hard to deal with lands. I mean, like if you don't have like legacy, ah, oh, we have wasteland in that format. Vintage, wasteland and strip mine, easy to deal with. 
Commander, you can only have one Field of the Dead in your deck. See, they pro problem solved in those formats. S tier card. Still S tier. Uh, where are we? Okay, we are now in the super chat territory of the show. So if anyone's, uh, if we anyone gets sniped, then that then that's when we go to the freebie section. We got uh, Rowan, the World Tree. Is that even a land? It is a land. It's the whole world in one tree. And as a battlefield tapped, you can add a green. As long as you control six or more lands, lands you control have tap. Add one man of any color. And then for uh, double Wooberg, tap, sacrifice world of the, tr the world tree. Search your library for any number of god cards. Put on the battlefield and shelf your library. Oh my goodness. How does this interact? I don't get it. Is it easy to pull this thing off? Like, certainly if you have any number of god cards on the battlefield, you have to win, right? Is that like a way of winning? Can you win? Hmm. Oh, the last one was Dark Depth, so you got screwed on that one, too. <laughs> okay, Sleazy, in that case, uh, you have to give me another one. Another one, Sleazy, another one. You could have put your other card here uh, in that super chat. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to make an executive decision and just say that this is like really mid. Uh, this is like sort of magical Christmas land stuff, but still, it is a win condition uh, on a land itself. So I will give it B tier. I have can I can do that confidently. Pace fan forever. Ottawa or Boseju. We did not do Ottawa yet. Ottawa. Uh, one of them is double? No. There we go. Auto. No, none of them are double. Okay. Ottawa, Soaring City, Legendary Land, uh, tap uh, at a blue channel for a blue three generic discard. Ottawa, return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary planeswalker. Basically, free card. You play blue, you have to play this in your deck. Uh, disadvantage though, a little clunky. Bouncing something is not nearly as effective as destroying it, so it's like it's only a temporary answer. It's not permanent, and you know, you know, it's all it's the old argument. What's better, disenchant or uh, boomerang? And this isn't even boomerang. A tier. It is a very nice card though. I love it. I've, I I don't leave my house without my Ottawa. Okay, another one from Pacers fan. Uh, we've got. Hall of the Bandit Lord. Hall of the Bandit Lord. Not everyone knows this card exists. Comes into play tap, but you can also tap pay three mana to add one mana to your mana pool. If that mana is spent on a creature spell, the creature gains haste. There are some combos where the creature needs to have haste immediately for you to combo off. Otherwise, you're waiting a turn to use its activated ability. So for that reason, Hall of the Bandit Lord is a sort of a sleeper card. It's a very, very good card, but very niche and narrow, uh, but very strong. It is so narrow... I'm still going to put in the B tier, but it's a card that could have more potential if there are more combo decks that could be used by this. Next up, we've got Alpha Nerd's Cathedral of War. <laughs> Enters the battlefield tapped. Has exalt <laughs> gives things exalted. Also add one mana mana pool. Very, very, very weak interaction for playing a, not a colorless land. C tier. Didn't even have to think very hard for that one. Back to art! Fetch lands! Do Misty Rainforest. There are so many videos that just talk about how broken non like the fetch lands are. Um, where do we begin? It fixes your mana perfectly. You don't even need... if You just need more fetch lands and you need like non-basic lands and you will get exactly the mana that you need. Uh, through the fetch lands. On top of that, it completely manipulates your library. If there's garbage cards on top, just crack a fetch and change it all up. Then start using Sensei Divining Top to look through fresh new cards. So it's a shuffle effect for, uh, you know, getting rid of nonsense. On top of that, there are cards like Mystic Sanctuary, which you can find with Misty Rainforest, or just cards of a basic land type that you can tutor directly onto the battlefield. Misty Rainforest also can find Dryad Arbor, for crying out loud. It is arguably 
And I agree, they are better than the revised dual lands. They, we can live without the revised dual lands. I don't think we would live so well without the fetch lands. I mean, we would live, but we would not be nearly as happy. It has no mana symbol, so you can run one of each island one in commander. There we go! Look at it's all look how broken it is. Crocor games with uh, access tunnel. I don't even know what I'm looking at. I've never heard of this. Uh, this is we add a colorless or pay three tap. Target creature with power three or less can't be blocked this turn. This is like worse than another card. Right, we'll get a little picture of this this dude over here. C tier. I don't think making creatures unblockable for like basically taking my turn off is is worth it. I mean, unless I think uh, unless you're killing them, it's the only way. All right, let's pay to win time with Pacers Fan Forever with Lake of the Dead. Lake of the Dead enters the battlefield. Sack a swamp instead. If you do, put Lake of the Dead onto the battlefield. If you don't, play to its owner's graveyard. Tap to add a black to your mana pool. Also tap Sacrifice the Swamp. Add quadruple black to your mana pool. I can't remember. Um, who plays this card? It is a very, 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 very strong card. I mean, if you have a lot of swamps in play, you got Urborg. You basically just create like a bunch of black lotuses. Super black lotuses, effectively. But you do have need to have enough land in play to make this useful. Hold on, isn't the alliance? Okay, there we go. This is more more iconic art to take a look at. I'll put this in the A tier. I might be underrating this card at A tier. But you do have to build around this card a lot more than the other broken cards. Uh, next up, Frexian Tower. I don't even remember. Frexian has something to do with like. Does it have regeneration? No, it doesn't. Oh, it's sack a creature. That's what it is. Tapped out of black or tap sack a creature to add double black. It's a good card. I have to build around this card a little bit, but it's it's uh, it's a pretty damn it's a pretty damn good card. It's legendary land. You know, you're gonna sack a lot of creatures anyway. Something's gonna die against removal. This is an A-tier card. Next up, Valkyrie Awakening, my favorite modal, favorite modal card, uh, is the modal card of many modal players. Valakut Awakening. Okay, so we're here for the backside of it. Valakut Sto uh, Stoneforge enters the battlefield tap to add a red mana, but it has a spell on the other side of it. Instant, put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then you may draw that many cards plus one. So if it completely replaces itself. So basically, if you have you want a new hand, boom, you get a new hand. And it's at instant speed, so you could pass with a bunch of mana. And now, okay, at the end of your turn, Valakut Awakening for this many cards. Basically letting everyone know your hand was garbage. It's like, yeah, my hand was garbage. I bluffed you. You got bluffed. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You're going to do absolutely nothing about it. Okay, hold on. Uh, I need to get... On the other hand, it is very mana intensive on the other side. The, uh, the, the land side comes in the battlefield tapped. I'm going to give it B tier. It is a useful card if you want to play it. It is not the most overpowering card, though. Radiant Fountain! You, what are you calling this thing garbage for? So Radiant Fountain is good for a few reasons. First one, you gain you gain a good chunk of good life. Uh, enters the battlefield, you gain two life, adds a colorless mana. There are a lot of decks that abuse this card. I mean, maybe there's only one? Maybe just Amulet abuses Radiant Fountain? No, I think there's some other artifact decks that don't mind playing Radiant Fountain as well. Um, so, uh, it's not the worst card. It actually sees competitive play to pad your life total. And it does enter the battlefield untapped, which is nice. So, B tier. I will say, this is a lot more playable in 20 life, like, one-on-one -on -one magic than, like, like, like three-on-one. Uh, because the two life is going to matter a whole lot less in Commander when you have 40 life to start off with anyway. 
Frexian Tower, great soul land for. Oh no, you got super. You got sniped, Spectral Maniac. So sorry. Yeah, we just did Frexian Tower. You got you got beaten to the punch. So we will donate that to who hasn't got a card yet. Let's look in this freebie section. Who does not have card? The Metallic Drans or Seed Core? The Seed Core to you. Okay, it is a tap. It's a sphere. Tapped at a colorless. Also tap at one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast Frexian creature spells. Also has corrupted. Tap target one one creature gets plus two plus one until end of turn. Uh, activate only if an opponent has three or more poison counters. Ooh, that's hard to pull off. So someone needs to already be on their way to dying to pull this uh, this ability off. Which at that point, like, is this for like infect decks? This is like if you're if you're playing infect and someone's already in trouble, then they're really uh, then they're really in trouble. That being said, I think the uh, the third ability is a little win more or it, like if you already got like that much poison on someone they're probably already lost i don't know if you need this ability at that point um hold on, give me a second here next up on we got winding canyons winding we are we're finally filling up the lower tiers. Add colorless man your mana pool. Or pay two. Tap until end of turn. You may play creature cards whenever you could play instance. So you can cast creature spells. Look at that flash. Okay. That, I thought this was going to be a trash card. This is actually not too bad. It's a little mana intensive for a deck that would want to play with creature cards because you're already spending mana. But uh, I think the effect is worth it. I'll put in the B tier. Is that reserve list? It is reserve list. So it's uh it's pumped up a little bit by the reserve list. Okay. J G T Jackets. First time making it to your show, the Cabal Coffers. Cabal Coffers. Pay two, tap, add a black for each swamp you control. So this plus Uberg me Uberg means tons of mana. That's all I have to say. Is this the Mirari out here at the bottom? It's the most iconic thing we can see in the art. Uh, A tier. There are many decks built around the Cabal Coffers. Always has been. Uh, the only downside to this card, you need a lot of lands in play. The more lands you have in play, the better this card gets. Um, so the game has to be a little, at least a little bit of slow to get enough value off of it. But it is a fantastic strong card. Okay, next up. Let's take a look at... Uh, Prod Mile, Oger, t Oger Tack. Is this a land? Deepest Foundation. Uh, when it dies, you transform it. Does not count. Must, must immediately be played as a land for it to count. Otherwise, I'm going to consider it just a god. So I'm going to donate that one to... We'll donate it to Re Cascading Cataract. Isn't this like a jank card or something? It's indestructible. Uh, tapped at a colorless. Pay five, tap. Add five men in, in any combination of colors. Actually, so this actually is very useful. So it is indestructible. No Armageddon is going to be useful here. Or your Strip Mine. Or your Wasteland. Or your Dust Bowl. Or your Ghost Quarter. And you can. And it's a huge mana fixer for the decks that need it. Cascading Cataract. It needs to be in a very specific deck, though. So I'm going to put in uh, the B tier. Uh, I I can't remember how it worked. A boom and bust deck beat me with this card once. There's like some cards that are like each player sacks a land or each player sacrifices t or so it has each player destroys two lands. Like destroy two of your lands, destroy two of your opponent's lands, and this thing cannot be destroyed. So in the end, like I only s get my lands destroyed. Uh, yeah, it's a pit. It's quite a pity, Mr. Bond. Okay, Sleazy. Last one was Dark Depths. Well, so what's your replacement? You need. We need a replacement, Sleazy. Did you, uh, did you post something lately? Hold on. I'll try to keep an eye out. Otherwise, we'll donate it at the end of the show. We can always donate it. King Ginger with Jurassic Park.
Uh, doesn't this flap at the end for each opponent? So I destroy all walls, exile the saga, then return it to the battlefield transformed. Doesn't count. <clears throat> Must be land immediately. Okay, so we donate that one, King Ginger. We are going to donate. We'll donate to Blaze Swarm Yard. Swarm Yard, land, Alcolus, regenerate to target insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. So you need a very specific deck for this. I guess some rat ninja decks might like this. I guess? The squirrel decks are going to love this. But they don't even have that many squirrels, though. B tier. It's very high market like to me, it's got high market vibes. It's almost like elephant grass, except uh, slightly better. Because I think these creature types are a bit... St I think rats, insects, and squirrels are better creature types. I can't really speak to spider. I don't know how good the spider card's out there. Google made me believe it was a land. Yeah, you have to be careful what you Google. Google isn't always right, you know? You gotta use some interpretation around there. Pace is fan forever with um, Alchemist Refuge. Atacolis, pay a blue green, tap, you may cast spells this turn as though they had flash. Same thing as that last card. It's like so mid. Very, very mid. Uh oh, B tier is getting filled up. We're filling the B tier up. Uh <laughs> not elephant grass, elephant grave oh, elephant graveyard. Elephant graveyard. Okay, next up, we've got Gareth with Literal Arena or the Island of Whack Whack. Uh, okay, we'll go with Arena, I guess. <laughs> How many things are going to pop up? Oh, here, here's Arena. Okay, pay three, tap. Uh, tap target creature you control and target creature of an opponent's choice that they control. Each of those creatures deal damage equal to its power to the other. That sounds not good. It's like a weird form of... Okay, first off, it doesn't add mana. It's a weird form of removal. It takes your card out of combat. Not in love with Arena. It's not... It's like a weird, janky form of removal. C tier. If it added mana, it'd probably be like a complete game changer. Because if it added mana, then like you can curve out with this and then tap it for, uh, for its effect at any time you want. Right, you'd have more room to do that. Like here, you need like three extra lands in play. What have you been doing for the last, like, first three turns? Boulder Boy! Oh god, when did this, when did you, like, make the super chat? Boulder Boy. Okay, I'm going to make some attempt to find you. If I fail, I'm donating this super chat. Boulder Boy! Okay, I found you. So what's your... Uh, Urborg! Easy enough. You gotta be careful when you super chat and you, don't, you didn't spend enough to actually put the text in there. I may not find you. Okay, Urborg is a... Uh, it's a it basically, it's a swamp. Turns all your other lands into swamps. And also, it, like, fixes your mana in a lot of ways. You know, if you got Urza Saga in your deck, you got Urza Saga, Wasteland, those are swamps too now. You know, people who play those black decks, they need double, triple black. They need to play them Necropotences. Urborg is a huge mana fixer. So for that reason, this is an easy A tier. It's basically Yavamaya playable. It's in the same category of Yavamaya. Uh, okay, next up... The House! How about Arcane Lighthouse or Dryad Arbor? Arcane Lighthouse. <laughs> pay call us or pay one tap. Until end of turn creatures your opponents control. Lose hexproof and shroud and can't have hexproof or shroud. But it like doesn't deal anything with indestructible creatures. I think this is a little niche. It's like a smidge a little niche, in my opinion. It does add co like colorless mana, but I think it's like a little bit below the bar. Hex like if it dealt with hexproof and indestructible, I think it makes it a little bit more playable. It's just very specifically hating on only hexproof. Uh, 
yeah, I think it's like it's a little weirdly niche for me. Pacers fan says, I got sniped by Cabal Coffers. Can, can I do Valakut the Molten Pinnacle? Oh, absolutely. Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. Valakut the Molten Pinnacle enters the battlefield tap. Whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if you control at least five other mountains, you do need a lot of mountains, uh, It will. you may have Valakut the Molten Pinnacle deal three damage to target creature or player. Tap to add a red mana to your mana pool. Uh, one of the most powerful lands in, in modern... I really have no idea what play this thing sees in Commander, if it sees it at all. Because you do have to build your deck around this card quite a bit. Either that, or you have to play Dryad of the Illusion Groves. So either you play like a lot of mountains, or a lot of Dryads to make up for this card's effect. Uh, but this plus, there's combos between Primeval Titan and Scapeshift that take this thing over the, uh, over the, like over the top. Not to mention, like, it's like removal in itself. I mean, you can just play lands and start bolting your opponent's creatures to stall the game before you decide to win. So, um, good in some commanders. Either way, I'm going to make it an A-tier card. Very, 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 very strong. You have to build around it, but it's very, very strong when you do. The payoff is there. Next one. Uh, Restian Serpentine, Lake of the Dead. Did we do Lake of the Dead? I'm going to find out in a second. I think we did Lake of the Dead. We did do Lake of the Dead. Uh, you got sniped on... I don't know if it was a public snipe or a paid snipe. So we'll give to Hinaria, Westville Abbey. Wait, this one. Uh, pay colorless to add... Sorry, tap to add a colorless. Pay five. Tap, pay one life. Put a 1-1 one, one white and black human cleric creature token onto the battlefield. Or pay five, tap. Sack... Five creatures transform it into the indestructible lifelink flying hasty Ormandel. Honestly, the fr I think it's like a little too fancy uh, in the grand scheme of things. But it's like sort of free to play if you're playing like, I don't know, a human cleric deck or just or, or a token deck. Because you can just sacrifice any five random creatures to, to transform this thing. I might be lowballing this a little bit, putting it into uh, B tier. Maybe it's worth a little bit more. Could be worth a, a smidge more on the tier list. We did Boseju. So we'll donate this one, Pacers fan. We did Boseju, like, what? right at the beginning. You were there. Okay. Uh, so we will donate to... Who hasn't got a card yet? Anyone got a card? Can't tell who has got cards, who hasn't got cards at this point. Who shelters all, not who endures. Oh, Buseju who endures! Okay, good save, Steve Cooper. Oh, no, hold on. Who, who shelters all? I don't know my Bosejus. They're all the same to me. Okay, it comes into play tapped. Pay, uh, tap, pay two life, add one to your mana pool. If that spell... If the mana is spent on an instant or sorcery spell, it can't be countered by spells or abilities, which is fantastic. So it protects your combos. On the other hand, very, very, very narrow card. Insanely narrow. And you probably have... Your combo probably has more other pieces that are vulnerable to counter spells. So we'll put that into the uh, B tier over here. Next up, Cabal Coffers has also been done. Pacers fan forever. You're just like, trying to scoop up all the cards that... Uh, we already did, so we'll donate that one. Uh, Hall of Heliod's Generosity. I like it. Generosity. Infinite enchantments. Tapped out of Cullis or pay a white one generic tap put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. Yes, Helid is very generous. Have infinite enchantments. I don't know anything specifically that breaks this, but it's like a, just a good utility card, just like Academy Runes. So if you use your enchantments and it dies, you can bring them back easily. Uh, I think this is... Honestly, it's like somewhere between A and B tier, so I'm just going to put it like in between here. I, don't, I honestly... It's like way better than these B tier cards, but it's, way, it's actually way worse than the A tier cards. So we'll just put in like some sort of funny limbo uh, over there. We did Rogue's Passage. Was it that this thing? I think that's Rogue's Passage over there. City of Traitors. Another soul land. 
the clunky Soul Land. The clunky version of, uh, what's it called? Uh, ancient Tomb. Whenever you play another land, you have to sacrifice your Ancient Tomb. So that's the downside. So you get, uh, you get great ramp, but at the cost of uh, losing the land if you want to put another one in play. That being said, it's busted. I mean, this is just a busted land. It's a soul land. It's a, it's a crappier Ancient Tomb, but it's still Ancient Tomb nonetheless. It would probably see would like way more play even in Legacy if like Ancient Tomb didn't exist. Usually it's like four Ancient term, Tomb, two City of Traders. Just because Ancient Tomb um, doesn't disappear. I don't know how to, I really have no idea how to encapsulate the City of Traders. It's hard to get an image out of it. Uh, where to put it? Where did I put Ancient Tomb? Did I put it up here? We have, uh, yeah, the Ancient Tomb's up there. I can put this. This is like a pretty S tier ish card. In my opinion. Okay, next super chat from John. Any of the pathways? Uh, I don't like it when you guys do that. Why don't you give me? A, you have to give me a card here. Pa uh, what are the, pathway, pathway. Let's just look up pathway. Prefer suggestions. But we'll make do. The new dual lands. Do you like a dual land? Here we go. The bark channel pathway. One side it taps out a green, on the other side it taps out a blue. Disadvantage is, is technically a non-basic land. You also cannot tutor for these cards, but it is still a very, very, very playable land. It's actually a very nice dual land in Pioneer, and uh, it's just extra mana fixing for all the. Let's see what side should we get. There's any. This looks actually pretty interesting. The tide channel pathway. They parted the waves. It's not one of the most broken dual lands, but it's not one of the worst ones. Okay, this is a B, this is B tier worthy. You have to get it on in front of the world tree. Okay, world tree, you gotta move over here. Move over, make way for the pathways. Evan, another S tier land, the tomb of Arami. Oh, is it now? The two, oh, where is Tomb of Arami? Tomb, 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 Tomb. Did I spell this right? Oh, it's Urami. Tomb of. Tomb of Arami. It's a tapped at, it's a legendary land, tapped out of black to your mana pool, and if Arami deals one damage to you, uh, if you don't control an ogre, so better have an ogre. Pay four mana, tap, sacrifice all lands you control, put a Legendary 5-5 five, five black demon spirit creature token with flying named Arami into play. I think this is... Dude, I'm not going to say... This is pretty bad. Although once I played against a Tomb of Arami deck and it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Because they were in a position where they did want to sacrifice all their lands and put a 5-5 five, five black demon into play. Uh, but I think like the whole sacking all your lands for a 5-5 five, five that could just die. That's a little too high of a cost. And what are the odds you're even going to have an ogre in play? You're playing the ogre deck... The house! Uh, time for a D tier card. The Contested War Zone. Uh, okay, this is whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, that creature's controller gains control of Contested War Zone. Tap to add one to your mana pool or pay one. Tap attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero until the turn. We're not done yet. Hold on. Sorry about that. I've lost track of time. Time flies when you're raiding lands on a Magic the Gathering tier list. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. This is like, okay. It's not the most exciting thing I've ever seen in the world. Hold on, no, they get your land. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, this whole attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero. This is not gonna fly in like most formats. C. C tier. I mean, I could totally see this in, like, I don't know, if you're playing, like, a super fast aggro deck, this is, like, the last land you play. But usually those fast aggro decks, whether it be green, red, black, um, they can't use colorless mana very well. So it's a bit of a non-bow there, and even in the decks where you want to play with this thing. I haven't seen Ali in a while. Oh, we got Shire Terrace. The Shire. Tap out a colorless. Pay one tap. Sacrifice Shire Terra. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tap. Oh, it's like the uh, superior 
it's, not, it's it's an improved evolving not evolving wilds is that a, what what is one thing yeah it's evolving wilds i can't remember why it's pay one tap sacrifice oh no is what does evolving wilds do evolving wilds all i remember is like oh this one doesn't add mana that's the difference so this can add mana immediately um so that's power creep people the shire there's probably bilbo baggins home uh, B tier. <laughs> Shoot, we're running out of space. I'm gonna put the Shire over there. Right, right behind the B. Running out of space everywhere. So, Lizzie, I have no idea what the hell you're. Okay, so you said the last one was Dark Depths, but, um. I never got another card out of you. Or I'm, maybe I missed it. Where's Sleazy's card? If Sleazy had anything. Okay, there's a, is there any, like, stuff that, like, we've been missing this entire time? Sometimes I get these cards that are like, you didn't even do a uh, watery grave. Ooh, we got Pacers fan forever. Prismatic Vista. Dude, I'm, I'm going to skip this one for a second. You got like 20 cards today. You got like 20 cards. Who, who hasn't got a card yet? Uh, Iris didn't get a card. Crows and Verge. Uh, enter the battlefield tapped, add a call list, pay two, tap, sacrifice crows and verge to search your library for a forest card and a plains card, put on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So you get two lands and one. B tier. Well, there's the battlefield tapped. Very, very, very mid. Damn it. Where can I. We can put it on top of the rogue's passage. If anyone can even recognize it at this point. B tier is filled. I swear I needed more tiers for this. Uh, did we... We're missing strip mine. That strip mine's a big one. No, did we do... We did strip mine, didn't we? That's S tier. Here's strip mine. Strip mine's right over there. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we did the dual lands in general. S tier. Uh, we did... Oh, we didn't do mazes end. I think Maze's End is jank. Probably upset some Maze's End players over there. There's the battlefield tap. Tapped out a callus. Pay three. Tap. Return Maze's End to its owner's hand. Search your library for a gate card. Put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. If you control ten or more gates with different names, you win the game. But I don't have no idea how often you're going to win the game around here. The gate players are going to hate me. I'm going to put... I, I really think... This is a... This is a really jank archetype. If they hate me, they hate me, C tier. I'm running out of space in the B tier. That's right, I put Maze's End below high market. That's how much I value your Maze's End around here. Ah, uh, we did Maze of Ith. We have another super chat from Evan. Thank you very, very much. Grove of the Burn Willows. It used to be one of the better cards, especially since you could combo it with, uh, uh, what's it called, um, Punishing Fire? I mean, you still can. You can tap to add a colorless, or you can tap at a red or a green to add, uh, to, or, and your oppo each opponent gains one life off of that. So, they gain a life, but then you gain the ability to get your Punishing Fire back. But it's, like, basically only good in those decks. Also can be good in an El Eldrazi deck, because it's a three-color land. Adds colorless, adds red, adds green, without taking damage yourself. We'll give it slight A-tier treatment. You have to build around this card. Rishidan Port! So the only thing holding this card back is the fact that this thing's garbage in Commander. It's not even that good even in one-on-one uh, -on -one magic anymore. It has not aged very well at all. Um, it is a land tapped to add a colors to your mana pool. Pay one, tap, tap, target land. They should really reprint this thing in Modern. Maybe if this game came in Modern Horizons 3, we'd see a lot of play. As it is, it's just like a really clunky... It's a pretty clunky wasteland, really. That's all it does. I think this is another one of those cards that's between A and B, at least for now. Ugh, running out of space here. Where do I put my port? Oh, we can put it there. Oh, this is great. What a weird tier list. You can see, everything is so blended and merged together. Um, 
Someone name a Shockland, damn it. Love the art with the burning trees. Oh, yes, they're great. The Unholy Citadel. All your Black Legends gains bands with other Legends? Useless. There we go. We're filling up the D tier now. Oh, here we go. Lewis Tron Lance. Yeah, we can put uh, Urza's Tower. Now, this only sees play in modern, but it's like it's a powerhouse in modern. Tap to add a colorless to your, uh, to your mana pool. If you control Urza's mine, power plant, and tower all at once, you uh, Urza's tower specifically will add co three colorless instead. So it's effectively like a Mishra's workshop. You have to work for it, though. You do have to work for this Mishra's workshop, but we can put this in A tier easily. In fact, people are so afraid of the Tron lands that they play Pioneer just to dodge them. Okay, there we go. Sadly, boop. Thank you. Okay, steam. Let's go with steam vents. Steam vents. Uh, now where do we put? It's a strictly worse dual land compared to the other dual lands. As steam vents enters the battlefield, you may pay, pay two life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tap. Where do you guys? Where do you guys stand on steam vents? Is it A tier or S tier? It's still like a great land. It can enter the battlefield untapped. You can tutor them. You can search them out. It's a, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but on the other hand, it is a strictly worst like revised dual land. It will shock you. It is very strong, but also it is just strictly worse than the other ones. So people are like, it's the super S tier. Well, it's not that strong. A tier A. I, I agree with this because we cannot be so confident that this is an unbelievably powerful dual land. We have to take it down a notch. Where do we put it? Uh, let's put it in front of the cloud post. I gotta put it above the cloud post. Oh my god. I've got so many layers. So many layers. So many layers, so little time. No! <laughs> Space, oh, Space Fan got sniped like immediate, like a, it just immediately sniped. Okay, now you can give me a card, Paces. What, it, what was your last one? You had a different card earlier. I don't remember what it was. I tried to sneak in another one in there. Uh, okay, I'm going to give. Okay, let's just donate this one. Man, I got sniped. You got you got well you yeah, but you super chat so many times. Like, how do you not get sniped? With many super chats comes many snipings. Nightly Cat, have we done Westvale Abbey? Uh, I don't think so. Westvale Abbey. We did some stuff that's similar to that card. Oh no, we did do Westvale Abbey. That was very B tier-ish. Jammin strolled with th thawing glaciers. Thawing glaciers. I think this card did not age very well. This card was very good back in the day because it was like the only way you could fetch lands out, but it was like really clunky and it thinned your deck turn after turn to ramp you out. Uh, but also, yeah, thinned your deck, you got a lot of lands, you could compete with your opponent on mana. But like by today's standard, it's so slow and clunky. C tier. I think it's just strictly worse than everything else. It doesn't even add mana, right? Yeah, it doesn't even add mana by itself. Oh, the Triomes from Steve Cooper, Xander's Lounge. Uh, these cards have broken the game. For If you need, like, Domain, Xander's Lounge will do the job for you. I mean, these cards actually have completely... With fetch lands, it's ve they're very, very strong. And in a pinch, yeah, you can cycle it for three mana to draw a card. You just need, like, almost any fetch land will fetch these. What is Island Swamp Mountain? So what, Windswept Heath is the only fetch land that will not fetch out this card? Easy A tier. Actually, the game has changed significantly thanks to the Triomes. Put the Triome over here. Right beside the Urza's Tower. Uh, a lot of people are mentioning Undiscovered Paradise. The hell is this card? I don't even know. Oh, this card. Uh, tap. Add one mana of any color to your map pool. At the beginning of your uh, next untap phase, return Undiscovered Paradise back to its owner's hand. So this is like effectively... 
a cheap Oboro if you need the Oboro. But outside of that, I mean, it's like a str also a strictly worse Oboro. I think it's like a C tierish type of card. I don't want to be bouncing my land. Unless you're playing mi like some sort of landfall deck, this is like really, 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 really awkward. I think this category needs a second stream. P probably. You know, originally it was supposed to be a dual land stream. And I decided, ah, screw it. Non basic lands it is anyway. Evan with Inventor's Fair. Every super chat sound effect has been done like 12 times. A uh, very strong card, actually. So, legendary land at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. So, they, you incrementally gain life every turn. Tapped out a call list. But also, the most important thing is you pay for, tap, sacrifice, and vendor's fair. Search your library for an artifact card. Reveal it. Put it to your hand. Then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. It's a land that tutors for more artifacts at when you need to. And you can do it anytime you want. So end of turn, crack this thing, go get my ensnaring bridge, go get Kirk Clan Ironworks, do whatever. Very, very, very strong card. A tier, easily. But A tier is running out of room. Yeah, we're gonna put it maybe between the blast zone and this random thing. There we go. I think we did good. We did we did a lot of these cards. All right, we're got this show got to end at some point. I'm gonna call it quits here. We got like a lot of the heavy hitters. Yeah, I probably need one more tier. This D tier wasn't necessary. All these D tier cards, I can go with the C tier nonsense over here. Did we miss anything? Would you change how these tiers would be posted? You let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be our show for today. Thank you very much for showing up, everyone. I really appreciate it. Remember, we have a show in the evening today. All right, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Because my whole... Okay, let me tell you the schedule for this week. For anyone who watches the show. We have a show. Tuesday evening, 8 o'clock, 8, uh, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Wednesday is going to be normal. Then on Thursday, it's going to be 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, 8 a.m. on Thursday. Because I am going to be at SCG Con Philadelphia this weekend. If you're going to be there, I will see you there. I'll be playing the modern events all weekend long. And then on Monday, we'll also have an evening stream at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. No show on Friday because I'm gone. So I just gotta make you gotta everyone's gotta know that one. We're gonna we're gonna have some evening streams for the people who can't make it here in the morning. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to either be part of the show or help other people be part of the show. And sometimes you get sniped and you help people randomly anyway. So you should feel good one way or another. And thanks to everyone who shows up in the morning because you guys are the show. Uh, like Ali, King Ginger, someone to foresee for, for Ginka. Conspiracy Cracker, we got Spectral Maniac, Toads, Iris. Tommy Siddons, Marcos, Jas Reed, because you guys are the coffee crew. Suddenly, boop. I'd be nothing without all of you. So keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.